As in the practice of the 1960s, male or each response could be modified, added to, edited, or otherwise uh, transformed by the recipient. And that would be a new work in part of the dialogue. The first public result of this, this dialogue, which I think contains some 20 tapes or so, was Linda Bendings' 1972 tape, Mambo, which you've now seen seven minutes, uh, in which previous materials of the video dialogue were used as raw material. And then in 1973, Robert Morris created his public response, which was called Exchange, a so-called video anthology, as he called it, or a review of the entire proceedings of the dialogue. This was the conclusion, the official conclusion, to a collaborative project that seems to turn kind of self-reflexively around the evolving relationship between two persons, uh, Linda Bedias and Robert Morris. However, uh, what this tape or these tapes make abundantly clear is the fact that this relationship is not really an entity that exists, so to speak, prior to its documentation through the medium of videotape. Whatever personal or social relationships seems to arise in this dialogue are, and I really insist on this, the unique results of the productive framework of televisual technologies. And they have no immediate correlate in any reality beyond this framework. This is what I think is the main proposition by this dialogue, this work. So Mumble and Exchange thus present relationships that are produced in terms of specific televisual features, such as signal-based sound and image processing. And for this uh, reason, the interpretation of these relationships cannot simply be referred to general theories of social or psychological exchange or intercourse. On the contrary, the televisual and aesthetic framework that informs this dialogue produces a relational mode that can only be accounted for in terms of its specific manifestation in mumble and exchange, these two public presentations of a long dialogue. Now, to watch this collaborative work is, in other words, then to be confronted with a form of sociality that has yet to find its description. We just don't know yet what it is. And the immediate experience is that of finding oneself deprived, so to speak, of the epistemological toolbox normally used in the description of social relationships or interpersonal relations or social space or what will you. And the confirmation of the notion of social order provided by these tools. If video is an epistemological tool of sorts, it seems to open up to a very different kind of knowledge of sociality. And ultimately, um, this revolves around an artistic medium that is principally construed as a new image technology, but at least these days, but whose early, I think, most self-reflexive practice opens onto a quite different set of questions. Firstly, the question of the medium as a social machine. And secondly, the way in which its deployment as an artistic medium opens onto a possible reconfiguration of the very idea or image of social relations. These are questions that concern, I think, not only this specific work. Uh, I think it directs us to a much wider realm of articulation that emerged within the early video art milieus. And there will no time in this lecture to discuss this wider horizon. So this work is an example of what I see, in fact, as a, as a larger articulation. Now, the general horizon for my analysis is as follows. Technologies are per definition social. I mean, that's, we all know that. And at the moment, 
a particular um, of new technology is appropriated and transformed into I often find I've seen an acute artistic articulation of the issues of sociality or collectivity related to the specific production of sociality associated with the technology in question. This is a moment that we can see again and again as different technologies are appropriated for uh, artistic techniques. And what I'm researching at this moment is such articulations in the early days of video and television art. So the question of sociality specific to the medium of video. And this is not an evident question at all. <coughs> to review then the interaction between the two tapes, Mumble and Exchange, it then, it's then not just to track a creative dialogue between two artists whose work in life is at times uh, tangential. It is more precisely to be presented with a particular mediation of social relations. At first look, a mediation of the kind of presence that two or possibly more persons have in relation to each other. And this seems to be the key themes of this artistic exchange as they evolve through the medium of video. But I think that to see what is meant by mediation of social relations, I mean, this sounds so simple, I think it's vital to understand the definition given to the notion of medium and mediation in this context. Video here is not just a communicational channel between two persons, not just postcard, letter exchange type channel. To the extent that video mediates between these two persons, its function is not that of an intermediary. That's quite important to me. And I want to evoke here uh, Bruno Latour's uh, quite suggest, uh, suggestive definition uh, of intermediaries and mediators. His idea is that the role of a mediator should be really sharply distinguished from that of an intermediary. And intermediary is something that transports meaning or force without transformation, so that when you're defining an input, you have also defined the output. It unifies and it should be counted as one single thing, even if it may be made out of many parts in principle. A mediator, in contrast, has a very different function. Its input will never meet its output, and its specificity has to be taken into account in every single instance. No matter how simple or self-evident a mediator might look, we know this technology, for instance, we know how it works, we know what it can do, these kind of things, uh, it may become a complex, a very complex thing, leading in multiple directions that will modify whatever is attributed to its role. So, as Latour puts it, a banal conversation may become a terribly complex chain of mediators where passions, opinions and attitudes bifurcate at every point. And I think that if video is chosen as the medium of exchange between uh, Morris and Mendes, it may be due to the fact that some of its technological features seem to explicitly support the notion that a so-called battle conversation may hold numerous complicating mediators. And Latour's key point is really that mediation and mediators are very rare phenomena. It's not something that you get all the time or every day. And worth tracing, worth looking out for precisely for that reason. So to argue that mediation is actually taking place in this collaborative work is then not to take its principle of dialogue or exchange or collectivity or collaboration for granted at all. It is, I think, in contrast to say that 